Alright guys, today I'm going to show you a recipe from the Pizza Bible, written by Tony Gemignani, 12 time world pizza champion. Alright guys, so to make Tony Gemignani's world famous dough from the pizza bible, uh, you have a few options actually. It's what's known as his master dough, and he has one with a starter and without a starter. If you do it without a starter, there's a set of uh, ingredients basically, which I'll have in the description, and you mix that all together and you're gonna let that ferment in the fridge for 24 hours and then you're gonna take it out and you're gonna ball it up and let the balls ferment for another 24 hours also after you bulk ferment it you're gonna want to degas the dough and then cut it into balls don't just cut it into balls straight out of there it'll be too airy and poofy and hard to roll but I'm gonna do it with the starter um, he has two options his Tiga which is a 70% hydration biga, so instead of it being 50% or 60% or 45% hydration, it's a 70% pre-ferment, essentially. And it's a room temperature uh, pre-fermentation. So let's go ahead and get that going. I'm going to start with cold water. I put this water, the cold tap water, in my uh, my fridge about, I don't know, 30 minutes ago or so. It's pretty cold. It's probably in the 60s. But he does say cold tap water. He doesn't say ice cold water. So it's good to notice that. So, first you're going to zero out your scale. And it's 39 grams of cold water. Perfect. Now on my, I call it a drug dealer scale because it can get such small amounts so perfectly. I'm going to weigh out 0.14 grams of active dry yeast. Got Fleischmann's Active Dry right here. There we go. It's literally not just a few gran uh, granules of yeast. And I'm just going to get that in my cold water. Beautiful. Turn off my little scale now. And right here I have Caputo Americana Super, which is a very high gluten flour. It's not bleached or bromated. And I'm going to need 55 grams of flour. This is the same flour I plan to use for the dough, so I'm going to use it for my tiga. By the way, Tiga is basically short for Tony's Biga.
we go. He says to mix it with a fork for a few seconds. If you think about it like a dough, this will absorb the water pretty quick. So basically, you keep mixing it like that. This is cool. I actually made a 70% hydration bead a long time ago. I will get into why. So now, I'm just going to put my trusty lid on. I might keep this open. It's got the tiniest little air holes. But this is just going to sit on my counter for 18 hours. So right now it is 11.45 p.m. So at about 6 p.m. it'll be time to make the dough. So it'll be perfect for today's Wednesday for uh, Friday night's dinner. So, perfect. Yay. Beautiful. Alright guys, I'll see you tomorrow to make the dough. For the final dough, for Tony Gemignani's Master Dough with the Tiga. Once again, I'll have descriptions for the Master Dough with the Poolish. And I'll have the Master Dough without the starter. Um, before you get right into the dough, about 30 minutes before your 18 hour mark of your Tiga, throw it in the fridge to start cooling it off a little bit and throw a couple ice cubes in some water to make 210 grams of ice water. Alright guys, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to have some warm water, 2.2 grams of yeast, throw it in the warm water give it a little stir and you should see some bubbles which I do so perfect if not your yeast is dead you're gonna to want to buy some new yeast throw your ice water in there I'm gonna throw my malt in there as well throw your yeast and water mixture I'm going to go ahead and just throw my oil in now. I could knead it in later, but I'm going for more of a direct-ish go. And then for your tiga, you're going to want to wet your utensil you used to get it out. If you're using a wet dough or wet pre-ferment, a wet utensil will scoop it out a lot easier. go there's all the tiga in there I'm gonna just mix everything try to soak up that uh that tiga break it up a little bit going against the bottom of the bowl can help break the pre-ferment up So my ice is still ice, which uh, I'm going to guess you want your ice to melt for the most part, but it's okay. And I'm going to put my room temperature flour on top of that. Start mixing that in.
Yeah, I guess crush your ice first or just use really cold water. There's an ice cube somewhere in here. So I get a nice little mix. I'll sprinkle my salt in. Keep getting into a point where I can start actually kneading. Twenty minutes. When I come back, I'm gonna ball the dough. All right, guys. So now it's time to ball this dough up. Might look shaggy, but it doesn't call for building tension. It's a good dough. I'm gonna cut it up into three. Feels good. Time to ball it up. Tony G dough. And it's time to refrigerate this. Alright, here is the Tony Gemignani Master Dough with Tiga. It's a nice feeling dough. Pulled out of the fridge about when I preheated the oven, so. It's not completely room temperature yet, that's okay. Feels really good. I mean, it's been at least 24 hours. I also want to show you guys the clap technique. So the side that's up, I press down first. This is the side that was on the bottom of the tray. Call this the spongy side. And this is the smooth side that's on top. What you're gonna do is, if you see my three fingers, I'm on the curvature of the dough. And with my other three fingers, I'm kind of pulling right there like that and going onto my palm and turning over and then doing it again. Once you get good, you can do it like that. And it really helps. That's another great way to stretch because sometimes your table might not be as sleek and might not slide on the table. So that's a pretty guaranteed way to get a good stretch out of your dough. That's the uh, traditional way actually to do it in Naples. So 
so let's see what this pizza bible is all about, shall we? Grande. This is a East Coast blend. It means it's half part skim, half whole milk. Give it a shake, make sure it moves. And a nice launch. There we go. I'm gonna set a five minute timer. It's always good to assess your pizza after five minutes of cooking. I don't know why I've been using the peel upside down. <laughs> Alright. That's where it looks at about five minutes. That's going to need at least another two minutes. I think my dog just licked my peel. Alright, here's a taste test for the sourdough Vega. I mean, it looks pretty pretty damn good, feels pretty damn good. Hope you guys can see that undercarriage. I don't want the cheese to move too much. I mean, that's, that's gorgeous as well. Holy shit. I, I totally understand Tony Gemignani here. Look at that. I mean, props, dude. Props. I gotta say, that's beautiful. Holy shit. I'm actually filming two videos at once. I'm filming my sourdough biga, and I just said that's the best thing that's ever came out of my oven. And then I look at this. Like, the possibilities are really fucking endless. So let's see. Oh, you can hear that. But it is like the right mix here, though. 2% salt, 2% malt, 1% oil. Hey, look at that bend. You fold it, it doesn't break, but it's like just about to. That's like exactly what you want. That's the consistency you're looking for in a New York pizza. I mean, see see how it like it wants to fall, but it won't. You fold it. Ooh, that's hot. And then you got the no flop. A dense crumb. That's actually what you're looking for. You don't really want a giant open crumb on a New York pizza. I mean, that is, that is gorgeous. We put this on the plate of the last pizza I just ate, my sourdough biga. I got my dog waiting. Very patient. Are you patient? Are you patient? You're very patient. So, I didn't even do this like 100% by the book, literally, because... He has a lot, a lot of instructions on the order of operations to make the dough. I'm confident enough in making dough that I knew it'd still come out right. I want to try the ingredients and the recipe. But holy shit! I mean, that is a beautiful dough. I can't wait to taste this. It's just too hot right now for me. So I'll come back in a minute after this thing's cool down, and I can't wait to try. The Pizza Bible Master, Master Dough with a Tigo. I mean, what can I say?
I mean, it's phenomenal, to be honest. I like the uh, temperature control in the recipe. Most of my recipes, I just use room temperature water and work around that. But something about the cold water, the 210 grams of cold water, where there's 70 grams of warm water, get the yeast going, and the total dough temperature is pretty low. Um, I mean, that's what temperatures come into play for is to find the final dough temperature. You can sell it's probably in the 50s or 60s before it even goes in the fridge. And then, holy shit, like, this is phenomenal. A lot of people probably say Tony Gemignani is a gimmick or whatever, but this is a genius dough recipe. Honestly, it's a genius dough recipe. I gotta give Tony Gemignani my full respect from one pizziolo to another pizziolo. This is phenomenal. It's made with commercial yeast, but it almost tastes like it's made with a natural yeast. And it's just beautiful. So I highly recommend trying this at home and going for it. And sooner or later, I'll give some more Tony Gemignani's recipes. Uh, I just want to pay homage. That's why I'm putting this in the paying homage playlist of mine. Because, holy shit, this is just a wonderful thing. I highly recommend you guys try it. It's a super versatile dough. You can use it for Sicilians, uh, focaccia, grandma, Detroit, all that kind of stuff. The same dough will work. If you're using something you want more open, like a focaccia or a grandma or Sicilian, I would recommend upping the hydration to around 67% or even higher if you want to, but don't want to run into problems. So start low and move up from there. When it comes to New York pizza, sticking right around 60 is what I recommend. Um, but yeah, I mean, goddamn. Excuse my fucking language here, but uh, Tony Gemignani, thank you for everything you've done.